Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to be checking out the Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter F5 to 6.7. So I thought it would be really fun to do a portrait photo shoot on this lens, but we are also going to be going out to do some bird photography, some bird videography. So we will have a really nice variety of photos to look at today. And I'm gonna share with you guys the straight out of the camera, unedited, 100% crop, so you guys can see all the details. As you guys might know, I'm mostly a wide prime lens shooter, so my favorite focal length is a 35mm, my go-to for portraits is an 85mm, and if I need a bit of extra reach, the longest I'll go is 135 so shooting with this 150 to 500 was definitely an interesting experience for me since the widest this lens goes is usually the longest I'll ever shoot. The IAF seems to be working really well as well. At first I needed to get my bearings with this lens, so the first couple of shots I took are nothing fantastic, but I did notice straight away that the IAF was performing really well, it was just locked on to Adelaide's eye. And I managed to get this shot which I thought was really impressive, where Adelaide was covering the majority of her face with her arms, and the eye was just tack sharp in the portrait. Maybe you could even, yeah, sit back with like your legs up. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, let me try and get a full body shot. I love that with both your feet up on the rock looks good. <laughs> He's coming for you. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were in a very shady area and it was a pretty dark day while we were taking these portraits. The clouds decided to roll in, so I had to use a higher ISO since we're working with an aperture of f5 to 6.7. Even with high apertures, since this lens is so long, I was able to get a nice amount of background to foreground separation. I really like how Adelaide was isolated in some of the shots we took, especially when the background was further away from her. Can you stay there? I'm gonna move that way and shoot at a bit more of an angle so I can get some further away shot. Can get some depth in our shot by shooting sideways. Oh, that looks cool. Are you guys getting bitten by mosquitoes or is it just me? It's always just you. Okay, great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really cool. I have the fern leaves in the foreground of the shot. They look really nice. This lens is incredibly sharp from 150 millimeters all the way to 500 millimeters. I have tack sharp photos at every single focal length I tried throughout this photo shoot. This lens uses the same newly developed VXD linear motors that Tamron used in the last year's release of the 70 to 180 f2.8, which if you guys remember, I love that lens so much for its quality and autofocus performance. I'll leave that video linked in the description, by the way, if you guys wanna watch that as well. And then I also wanted to try and take a full body shot when I'm completely zoomed in. So if you want to stay there and I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go for a walk. Yeah, Come yeah. with me. <laughs> wow, that's still like cropping up to your knees. Yep, just there is good. Yay, oh my God. So I'm going to take a full body shot of Adelaide at 500 millimeters. And what Dan just filmed is how far away we are from each other to get that. Oh, I love that. And can we do some with the cardigan off your shoulders again? Wow, that looks so cool. All right, that's good. <laughs> that's so crazy. 
That's just so far away. What a thing. <laughs> Reunited. <laughs> There's no way. I want to see if I can get some like bokeh balls in the background of the shirt. It's like saying bokeh bokeh. <laughs> I shoot from down here, I could probably get some. Ooh, that looks so cool. Yeah, I love that cozy kind of posing. Nice, let me zoom in a little. The bucket is nice and clean from this lens. During our portrait photo shoot, we obviously had some noise since I was shooting with a high ISO, but here are some sample images that I took on a sunny day and you can see just how beautiful the bucket looks. And the last thing that I wanna show you guys is I wanna take a photo at each like main focal length and I'll put them all side by side so we can see the difference in range of this lens. So I'm gonna start off at 150 and then we'll go to 200. And now I'll do 300 and 400, perfect. And last but not least, we have 500, which is a nice headshot. <laughs> This lens features four separate switches. Most obviously we have our usual MF to AF switch. We have a focus limiter switch that allows you to lock off between full coverage, three meters to infinity and 15 meters to infinity. This is really nice to have when you're shooting further away subjects with possible close up obstacles. Thirdly, we have our vibration compensation on and off switch. And finally, the vibration compensation mode selector switch. Here you can switch between mode one, which is standard VC, mode 2 for panning shots and mode 3 for framing priority. During the portrait session, I was on mode 3 for priority framing. I felt like that looked the most stabilized out of all of them and made it easier to shoot with. During our bird photography though, I tried out all three. The only thing that's missing on this lens is a customizable button like you see on GM glass. I feel like there's more than enough room physically on this lens and on the 70 to 180 for that matter to add a button like that, but I feel like it's not really a deal breaker, but just something that I wanted to mention in case that button is important to you. By the way, if you wanted to download a high resolution JPEG sample gallery of some of the photos that I took with this Tamron 150 to 500 on the Ace and some on the a7s3 as well i'll leave a link to my blog where you can find those but i put together some shots at different focal lengths so you guys can just take a look at them for yourselves without having any video compression so dan also got some video of the birds first we have some 4k video on the a7 III, which is handheld and here is an example of what the video looks like at 500 millimeters with stabilization off and then what happens when you turn it on. Again, this is a handheld shot using VC mode three. Next, we have some 25p and 50p slow-mo footage from the a7S III. This time we use the lens on a monopod as this would be the preferred way of using a lens like this for a lot of photographers and videographers capturing these kinds of shots. Dan was using a mixture of all three VC modes for the examples, including VC2, which is designed for handheld panning. Overall, I think Tamron have done it again with another great lens, just like the 70 to 180 f2.8 for Sony. While this isn't a budget telephoto, at this length, there really isn't a super budget option without trading heavily on quality and performance. It is cheaper than the alternatives in a similar range from Sony, however, at the cost of aperture, but not quality. So if you are shooting at higher apertures regularly anyways, this is definitely a good option. You are also, in my opinion, getting bang for buck when it comes to image quality, sharpness, and autofocus performance. I'm super curious how this lens would perform against the Sony 200 to 600 f 5.6 to 6.3, which is a few hundred more expensive than the Tamron, or even the Canon RF 100 to 500 f 4.5 to 7.1, which is more than twice the price of the Tamron. So if that's something that you guys want to see on my channel, or if you want me to compare this lens to any other similar lenses, 
images, let me know in the comments. Again, make sure to take a look at the high resolution sample images that you can download from my blog. I'll leave it linked in the description for you guys. And let me know what you think of the photos and if you enjoyed seeing me do some bird wildlife photography as well, maybe we can do more of that on the channel because I had a lot of fun doing that yesterday. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.